Peace, Kim family. It's me, Bana Set Kind Segment, the naturopathic nurse for Comedic Wellness Sacred Healing Center. And I'm back with another video. I want to welcome you all to my channel in 2021. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, if you're new to my channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button. If you are interested in videos that focus on health and wellness and spirituality from an African-centered perspective, that's what we talk about here on this channel and that's what we're going to get into today um, in terms of narcissism. So I have heard a lot about this um, condition uh, called narcissism and one of the reasons that I delved into um, understanding this condition is because of things that I had experienced in my own life and um, through these experiences I started to um, understand my part in the dynamics that I was experiencing in narcissistic relationships, mainly starting with my own family and then um, going into other relationships that I had in adulthood. And as we know, if we have experienced narcissistic abuse, that um, it generally starts with your family, which is what trains your mind to be able to accept this type of abuse in other relationships and um and being able to break free from that and learning about the dynamics between a narcissist and a codependent and the relationship that um they have with each other and how they both contribute to the toxicity um because i i think that's important because a lot of us really um focus on um narcissist 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 <laughs> and what they're doing to harm you however in order for that dynamic to continue you are playing a part in it you have to play a part in it and part of that is a victim mentality um, narcissists only seek out people who uh, allow themselves to be victims okay and um, I had to recognize that in my own life the way that I was able to break free from those relationships was by recognizing the characteristics in myself that attracted and kept those types of people around me and I think that's what a lot of us are doing in an attempt to heal ourselves from situations and from relationships that have made us feel less than and unworthy and um, depressed and anxious and um, really not able to fulfill our, our purpose, our mission here in life because we're so bogged down with all of these things. And in seeing how this is playing out with so many people on an interpersonal level and in also studying the dynamics um, of race uh, in my own practice, um, I started to see that this is something that is not just happening on an interpersonal level and from my own observations based on my own experience and my own understanding of what narcissism and codependency is i believe that this is something that is trickling down into interpersonal relationships because it is happening on a global societal level mainly between whites and blacks and um i think that we are not looking at it in those terms and it's important for us to begin to look at it and understand it so that we can understand why we're experiencing this at such a rate and why there is so much pain on an interpersonal level okay a lot of the things that we experience in our lives did not just start with us they started in our families and some of them started in our families because of things that happened in society and things that are still happening it is my observation and my belief 
okay this is just my belief if it resonates with you take it if it doesn't you can leave it okay this video was not meant to offend anyone this video is meant for the purposes of opening up your mind to exploring a new way of looking at our condition okay so that we can actually understand it fully and heal from it so it is my understanding that what we are calling discrimination or what we're calling racism or white supremacy is really a form of narcissism on a grand societal scale. And also the condition of black people that we are calling um, uh, being in a minority position or being in a poverty position or being in a lower caste in society is really a form of codependency and I want to explore what those two terms are in the context of race because there's a lot of information on um, line and out there about what narcissism is and what codependency is which is why the conversation is happening at the rate that it's happening um, now but I have not heard it discussed in these terms and I think it's important to look at it so let's first look at what narcissism actually is so narcissism basically deals with a type of personality that is very self-seeking and self-serving okay um and self-centered at the expense of other people and a lacking of empathy for other people uh, a narcissist is a person who uh, doesn't see people as human beings necessarily but more as objects to be used for whatever purpose they want to use them for and um, the term narcissist actually comes from Greek mythology so there was a story of a, a man I believe he was a hunter by the name of Narcissus and this man was adored very widely adored for his looks he was a very handsome man and because he was so adored for his looks he actually felt like no one else was good enough for him so he rejected the advances of every woman who um, approached him and uh, he ended up actually spending time in his own company by a body of water like a, a pond or a lake and staring at himself in the reflection of the water he was so in love with his own image that he ended up um, dying there alone looking at his own reflection and in the space where he died uh, there was a flower that was erected and it's called the narcissist flower okay so that is where the idea of the narcissist comes from now what we see the types of behaviors that we see how it's played out with narcissism there is a spectrum of it okay so you will see anything from a covert narcissist which is a person who has these um same feelings but operates on a more um, passive aggressive level it's not um, obvious the things that they're doing to other people it's not obvious to other people uh, then you may have a covert narcissist who is more grandiose who is more boastful who is more arrogant and it is uh, a little bit more obvious that this person is a narcissist that this person is self-serving and self-seeking and um, uh, will use people out in the open um, and then it goes uh, to an even uh, sicker uh, form of this condition further on the spectrum, which is um, psychopathy and sociopathy. And these are people who are dangerous to the point that they fantasize about and even act out harming other people physically and in other ways okay financially emotionally these are people who tend to be extremely extremely abusive and um even on the spectrum of those who are mass murderers okay a lot of times they go undetected totally undetected okay uh, but the vast majority of people who are narcissists are not um they are not 
uh, cr in the criminal system they go under the radar so they don't get caught some of them are in your family some of them are people that you work with and they exhibit these types of toxic um, energy vampire behaviors um, where they are harming other people for their own um, amusement entertainment or to gain energy from them in some type of way and these types of people will seek out uh, certain types of people who will accept this abusive or toxic behavior and usually the people who accept this type of behavior have been um, prone to accepting this behavior uh, earlier in their life meaning they experienced these types of things in childhood in their family relationships which taught them that this was acceptable this was okay or that it was comfortable right you may not necessarily feel like it's something that you like or something that you enjoy but it is familiar to you and that is where the codependent comes in okay so the codependent is the quote unquote victim okay is the victim but they're not really a victim codependent is not really a victim they see themselves as victims and uh, sometimes because they were actually victimized in their lives meaning they were um, on the receiving end of some type of verbal physical or sexual abuse early in their life which allowed them to feel low enough about themselves that they would accept mistreatment again okay so that is the problem when you experience those types of things early in your life is that when other people treat you that way it is not a, a siren that goes off it's not a red flag that goes off that says something is wrong here because you are used to it already you're already used to the behavior right and so codependents have a tendency to um, seek their validation from other people rather than uh, seeking validation from within. There's a sense of very low self-esteem. And there's even a psychologist here on YouTube um, who has re-termed codependency self-love deficit disorder. Okay, because it really is the manifestation of someone who does not love themselves, that they're not able to seek validation about their own worth or importance or even their own sense of identity from themselves. They're seeking it from someone else. And that is where the narcissist will come in, meaning they will tell you who you are. They will tell you who you are and when they want they will put you on a pedestal so that you feel great about yourself and when they want to they will devalue you and remove you from that pedestal so they have control over your emotions and um, a lot of times that is done through um, verbal abuse and a lot of times the building up of your self-esteem is done through uh, flattery, overt flattery, or what we would call love bombing, which is where someone is um, showering you with a lot of attention or compliments or praise uh, based on certain qualities. And because you don't have your own self sense of self, um, where you give yourself that type of praise on your own, when another person does that, it fills you up and you become attached and addicted to that, that type of admiration or love. But that also means that this person has the ability to lower your self-esteem when they uh, remove that flattery and that praise, which a narcissist often will do. Um, they will do that by belittling you or criticizing you or um, diminishing your accomplishments and because you don't have your own sense of self you will fall um, prey to that another feature of a codependent is a uh, lack of boundaries okay meaning you have a difficult time understanding where you end and where 
the other person begins, where your feelings end and where the other person's feelings begin. Or you'll have a difficult time telling people no, or you have a difficult time telling people um, that something bothers you, okay? Codependents also tend to be people pleasers. They want to make everybody else happy. They want to specifically make the narcissist happy because they need their validation in order to feel good about themselves. When they have that validation from the narcissist, they feel like they're on top of the world. And when they don't have that validation, they feel worthless. And so they will go out of their way to um, gauge what it is that the other person needs in order to keep them happy meaning you're always focused externally you're always focused on what the other person needs and the narcissist is always focused internally meaning everything is about me 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 i i i i i'm only thinking about my needs and at the even at the expense of other people's i'm not considerate of your feelings what it is that you need all I want is to be able to get the supply or the energy that I need for myself. That's the mentality of the narcissist, okay? So I'm outlining this so that you can see um, how this plays out on a grander scale as well, okay? Another feature of the codependent personality is a sense of learned helplessness, okay? This is a very important one learned helplessness where you have been beaten down to the point where you don't even think that you can do certain things for yourself you don't even think that you can function independently you don't even think that you can do normal everyday adult things that would help you to manifest the life that you want to live in your purpose and to complete your mission here in this world you don't even believe that you can do that and um there was an experiment that was done uh, some time ago where um, they were testing animals i believe it was a dog and they tested the dog by um, having the dog jump over something jump over a, a particular goal and every time the dog would jump over the goal they would get a shock right they would get a shock and eventually the animal learn from getting this shock over and over that they never even tried to go over the goal anymore they stopped trying to go over this obstacle because of the shock that they kept getting and eventually even when they removed the shock factor the animal did not believe that they could go over that goal they, they wouldn't even try anymore and that is how learned helplessness happens in human beings and in the codependent personality, meaning you've been knocked down so many times over and over and over and over, been put down, been mistreated, that you don't believe that you can um, have a sense of self without someone else's approval. And this type of thinking is very, very dangerous very very dangerous it will lead you to betray yourself by staying in situations where you are being mistreated or being abused um, because you don't believe that you can have anything other than that and this is the same exact dynamic that we are experiencing on a societal level in terms of whites and blacks okay and when i say that it is not meant to offend anyone it is meant for the purposes of really examining this um dynamic for healing and i know even in saying that that there are certain people who are still going to be offended and that's what's called a narcissist injury uh, typically when you show a uh, narcissist true colors and you reveal who and what they are and what their intentions are, there tends to be uh, a backlash or um, a punishment for doing that. 
and so I'm pretty sure that I may receive some negative comments in the um, comment section about this video and I would encourage you all um, and I'm speaking to us at this time um, I would encourage you not to engage with people who will make those negative comments because um, narcissists are energy vampires and they feed off of stealing your energy to go back and forth with them you're here for your own healing and you're here to understand your condition so that you can do better for yourself and even in doing that that is seen as a blight to the narcissist that is seen as an injury that is seen as an insult to a narcissist okay so I need you to understand that and do not feed the trolls <laughs> do not feed the trolls I also want to say that um, we're speaking in general terms here so there is absolutely no need to tell me that not all of us are this way not all um, I have never met um, all of the people walking the face of this earth so I cannot speak on all people of any group um, it is understood that I'm speaking in general terms okay so what's understood does not need to be stated I'm not speaking about all people these are general terms okay so now that we have a little bit of an idea of what narcissism is let's apply it to white society so that we can see what white narcissism is right so from this perspective you get one group of people who is maligning and mistreating and oppressing another group of people for their own benefit and then you also see on our side with the codependent that there is this overwhelming need to try to please this group of people to um, distort yourself, conform yourself, bend yourself, twist yourself in all different types of ways to escape the, mis this, the mistreatment because you don't understand why it's happening. You think that you can explain it away. You think that you can say, well, um, this is what you've been doing and this is why it's wrong and this is how it's affecting me and you think that they care and you think that they are lacking some understanding about the situation and that is not true that's not true um, a narcissist understands exactly what they're doing and if you learn and study the dynamics between the narcissist and the codependent this will make sense to you you will understand how to deal with um, this dynamic a lot better okay um, there is no point in explaining yourself to this person and I've watched so many different um, television shows interviews you know conversations even in real life and college and in social settings where there is a black person trying to explain our condition to a white person um and have them understand and it is always like talking to a brick wall and you think that you're gonna lay out the statistics, you're gonna show them how bad what they're doing is and that they're going to change. A narcissist doesn't change. And they understand everything very well. Now, one of the things that you have to know about a narcissist is that they are never going to validate you. They will never give you the validation that you want. So they're not going to come to you and say, yeah, this is blatantly what it is. Like, yeah, and this is what you need to do to get out of it. That's never going to happen. Never. You having those conversations is a waste of time, which is why I tell you that if you see certain types of comments in the comment section that are trying to detract from you understanding what this message is, you should um, report it. And if I see it, I will delete and block <laughs> because uh, it is really pointless to argue with a narcissist. It is pointless. They understand very well. 
okay one of the things that a narcissist will do to get you to question your own sense of reality is gaslighting and we experience that a lot where they will tell you that's not what happened that's that's not racist I we didn't do that you're imagining that so we just all made up the same story like we all just made up the same story yeah so <laughs> So, um, another thing that you'll see a narcissist do is project, right? So, they will take qualities about themselves that they don't want you to focus on and they will project those qualities onto you. So, we have a global society that is set up based on skin color and race. We have a global society set. There's no area of human activity that is not affected by narcissism and that is what i'm going to call it from now on we're calling it all different types of other things colorism discrimination racism all of these things narcissism that's what it is white narcissism so we have every single area of human life that is affected by this and when you call it out you're told that you're playing the race card do you see how that's done? Do you see how it's it's like a um a childish mentality? Like if you've ever heard a child say, um, you know, nana nana boo boo, whatever you say about me bounces off of me and sticks to you. That's what projection is. It's a it's a childish way of dealing with criticism when a person does not want to um take accountability for their own actions. So when you bring it up, they'll now say that you're playing the race card. Do you see that projection? Sometimes you'll even get, um, <clears throat> that's reverse racism. That's reverse, <laughs> which is a, a ridiculous term. It's ridiculous. First of all, there is no system where we are dominating any group of people based on race. There's no system like that, okay? Um, and, by saying that there was reverse racism, that would have to mean that there was forward racism, right? Uh, so that is projection. That's what that is. It's projection. Another thing that a narcissist will do in order to break you down is to separate you from the things that make you who you are, um, the things that you are proud of, and the things that you love about yourself right so for example um one of the things that was always um important to the black community was family family was always very important man woman and child and so um through certain things that were done we were broken apart to where we were not able to have that family structure so during slavery um the narcissist slave master would take one um one member of the family the mother and sell her this way and take the children and sell them that way and take the father and sell him this way and so the family would be completely torn apart and this started the basis of um, the family structure being completely broken down, which is what broke down our communities. Um, and then now you get this um, whole baby mama, baby daddy culture where people are just making children with um, people who they don't have a family with. And now they turn and say, look at you people, look at your families but you're not going back far enough to see where that started and how that was actually manipulated and this is why it's important to understand the two mindsets here but we have the onus on us to actually change this situation because if you understand narcissist thinking 
and a codependence thinking narcissist does not change they don't change because they don't have the ability to self-reflect they don't think that there's anything wrong with what they're doing they benefit from what they're doing they need to be able to do this in order to survive they need to be able to do this in order to survive this is the important thing that you have to understand because a lot of you think that you're going to talk people out of a particular behavior because it is harming you if this is how a person believes that this is what they need to do to survive there's nothing that you're going to tell them that's going to make them stop doing something that is needed for their survival the first law of nature is the law of self-preservation okay codependents have a problem with this reality because we are willing to self-sacrifice we are willing to put other people's needs ahead of our own um and um at our own expense at our own expense and so this is why you see us in a position where we are losing life because you are literally going against the laws of nature by putting somebody else's needs ahead of your own the onus is on us to change our mindset, to look at this for what it is, to look at the two dynamics and um, create a new reality for ourselves. Another thing that you'll see with the narcissist is pathological envy, where they are very envious of other people. And because they're very envious of other people, they also believe other people are envious of them. And... Um, we generally don't think that that is at the root of why we are being treated uh, the way we're being treated, but it is. There is a lot of envy and you can tell envy by um, one important characteristic that I notice about envious people, which is they will tear down certain characteristics about those who they are envious of, but in secret they will be trying to get those same characteristics so you'll have a group of people who tell you that um everything about the way you look is ugly it's hideous it's wrong it's terrible your skin is dirty it's ugly it makes you inferior yet they're having whole conferences in europe about melanin whole conferences trying to understand that stuff that makes you this color and how to get it okay meanwhile melanin is literally worth more by the gram than gold literally they're buying it okay and discussing how to get that melanin that is in you into them because it has many healing properties i would encourage you to read about melanin by um dr laila africa he has a book on melanin that teaches you the healing properties of melanin and what it actually is okay um another example is um telling you about your your physical features your lips your butt all of these things they're ugly they're horrible yet every trend of plastic surgeons is to um apply the features of black people to other groups of people so they're telling you that all of these features on you are ugly but then they're trying to get them that's envy that's a manifestation of envy okay um Another form of pro projection that we'll see in um, this global narcissism is uh, telling you that you came from some other type of animal, a monkey or a gorilla or something like that. And every single one of their studies has shown that the only um, true 100% human people, meaning you came here as a human you have always been a human are people of the african race that is a fact by their own scientists yet 
all of their research on their genetic makeup shows them evolving from some other type of Neanderthal creature, some creature that looks somewhat human, but isn't truly human. And so they're actually telling you where they really come from. And because there's an insecurity about that, they project it onto you and tell you that you're a gorilla and that you're a monkey and some, some other type of creature. When in fact, they're showing their own research that they don't come from a 100% human genetic makeup. This is their own research saying this. So you have to look at the manipulation that is happening. You have to look at it for what it is. Another form of projection is this idea that black people are criminals, okay? Um, we are some of the most humane, kind people on the face of the planet. And the narcissist detests this about you because it's something that they don't have they detest this about you and they know that this is a part of what you deem to be most admirable about yourself and so they separate this quality from you by projecting their own criminality meaning criminal behavior is stealing right like stealing people from their homeland or stealing land from people. Criminal behavior is murder, like murdering people, you know, murdering groups of people, genocide. That's criminal behavior. And this is criminal behavior that has happened on a mass global scale. Yet, they will take everyday ordinary things that black people do and lock you up for it. And now you're the criminal. It is separating you from the goodness that you that you are and that you have and telling you that you're actually the criminal. You're, you're the one who deserves punishment. It is a form of projection and it's something that is real. It's something that is really happening, okay? There are black people who have been locked up for uh, things such as vagrancy, which is like standing outside on a, on a street corner or standing in front of a building um, or they call it trespassing. You'll even see uh, black people being locked up and still serving very, very long uh, prison terms for something as harmless as marijuana. Meanwhile, there are other groups of people who are making large amounts of money currently because they have decriminalized it so they get to decide what is criminal and what is not meanwhile they have never paid for the criminal behaviors and the abusive behaviors that they have um, inflicted upon us you see so they use projection they don't want to look at what it is that they've done or to be held accountable for what it is that they've done and so they make you pay for it and so that leads to a system in which you have a country such as the united states that houses over 80 percent of all of the world's criminals which is black people right you will see with narcissistic behavior that they only view you for their own purposes, not as a human being, but they don't see you as separate from them. They see you as uh, something that they own as a part of them. Sound familiar? Slavery, right? Okay, so this is a type of mentality that allowed one group of people to feel that they should and could own a whole group of people and make them slaves forever you were never supposed to get out of that and you still have it if you're paying attention because the prison industrial system is slavery with a new name 
the only difference is that they have made you believe that you are deserving of being in prison because you are a criminal so they just put these charges on you and um they can literally make up charges out of thin air they can make up charges out of thin air okay and lock you up for it you don't have to actually do anything and a lot of people find that hard to believe and i'm telling you what i know from experience and so we have to be intelligent enough that we do not fall for the manipulation and the tricks and the um, abuse of this type of narcissistic behavior. That onus is on us. Just as it would be in any narcissistic codependent dynamic because the codependent is the only one who can and will change narcissists do not change okay they lack the ability to self-reflect they lack the ability to see how their actions impact other people and they lack the ability to empathize and care about how their actions affect other people and so because you are the one experiencing it you are the one who has the responsibility to change the dynamic. And that is something that seems so difficult for us as a group of people to understand that the change in this condition is not going to come from the same people who created it. That is never going to happen. The change in this condition is not going to come from one leader either. This is a spiritual war. It is a war on the spirit. Just like any narcissistic co-dynamic or codependent dynamic. It is a war on the spirit. And you have to go through a spiritual purification, a renewal, a mental purification, emotional purification in order to change the relationship. And all of the same things that are taught in terms of how to break free from a narcissistic relationship can be applied to this global dynamic. So for example, one of the things a codependent needs to do and must do is to get some space between them and the narcissist. That means going low or no contact with the narcissist. And the reason that I'm putting it in these terms is because oftentimes when people suggest this to us, we think that we are doing the same thing that the narcissist did to us by saying, I don't want to be around you. That is not true. That is not true. You're not the same as somebody who mistreated you because you don't want to be around someone who is mistreating you. That is insane. And that is a problem with the codependent thought process that you think you're being mean or you're being um, harmful or you're hurting this person in the same way that they hurt you because you don't want to be around them because you separate yourself from them. A person who loves themselves will always separate themselves from people who mistreat them. You're supposed to separate yourself from people who mistreat you. Why would you want to be around people who mistreat you? That's insane. Why would you try to be around people who are trying to kill you? I mean, really think about that. If someone came into your house trying to kill you, you think that making friends with them is going to make your situation better? You should be trying to get as far away from them as possible. 
But a lot of us do these different things out of fear. We're very, very afraid. We've experienced some of the most traumatic things. And our situation is different than everybody else's situation. Nobody has experienced this on the level that we have. Although everyone else is experiencing it as well. They just haven't gotten it to the degree that we have. Okay, so understand that your story is very special. Your condition is very special and very different and you have to treat it as such. A lot of times we want to align ourselves with other people and look for friends in other people. And we are constantly experiencing that that is not given back to us in return. And that goes back to the codependent thinking. You need validation from other people. You want to click up with other people before you have learned to love and like yourself. And that always leaves you on the end of being discarded and being abandoned, meaning you're used for your numbers or you're used for your fight. And then when you need other people's assistance in your fight, they looking at you like, um, that's the, that don't have nothing to do with me. Sorry. That's what happens when you put yourself in this codependent dynamic with other people where you're always looking for other people's approval and assistance and looking for allies instead of understanding that you have all of the power within you. So you have to begin to take your power back. Another one of the ways that you take your power back is by validating yourself. Validating yourself having self-esteem building self-esteem is called self-esteem for a reason because you have to give it to yourself you see you can't get it from anybody else nobody else can give you self-esteem you have to build self-esteem and in the same way that an individual builds self-esteem this is how we will do it as a collective meaning you have to know yourself you have to know yourself you have to know your identity right this goes back to learning your history okay understanding the qualities that you have that make you who you are and embracing them and loving them and celebrating those things right we often seek validation from the narcissist meaning we believe that anything that is white is better there's this whole idea of white eyes being colder than black eyes okay meaning anything that you get from white people is more valuable than anything that you get from yourself which is why a lot of times you will not see us in our own cultural garb even people black people who get money they think that they made it when they can buy every white uh label out there that's not making it <laughs> that is not making it that means that you feel that you have been validated that you have reached a certain status when you can buy all of the white people stuff that you can think of but what about your own culture do you have a lot of beauty in your own culture your own cultural garb african clothing or clothing made by african people that are high quality but we don't look at that because we are seeking validation from another group of people not from ourselves other groups of people don't do this other groups of people don't do this okay they validate themselves by putting their money into their own communities and by propping up their own brand they celebrate their form of beauty before anybody else's. We're celebrating other people's form of beauty before our own. So validating the self based on your culture, right? Your cultural background and your family background and your personal history and background that's how you begin to validate the self and this is something that each of us has to do on an individual level before it 
um, sees itself in on a bigger scale okay that's the part that we have a hard time with because it requires real work it requires real self-reflection it requires a real lobotomy <laughs> meaning you are removing this perspective meaning the thoughts of the narcissist the way that they view you the, is the same way that you're viewing yourself and the way that you're viewing the world you have to have a lobotomy and remove that mind from your own mind and replace it with an african mind an african-centered perspective so that you can see the world correctly from your own worldview do you understand so i say all of that to say this is the basis of the things that i'm going to be doing here on this channel so when you see me um speaking on nutrition when you see me speaking on reiki um, when you see me speaking on all different types of healing modalities, womb yoga dance, these are modalities that are rooted in African natural lifestyle in an African centered perspective, because these are the things that are going to build you back up, build up that sense of self. Okay. Reinstate that self love, raise your frequency so that you know you will automatically know what it is that you need to do when you love yourself and when you embrace yourself you are, it, it's not a matter of not knowing what to do it's a matter of betraying yourself because you have been abused to the point that you don't even like and love yourself that you will not do what you need to do for yourself. That you have a sense of learned helplessness. That you don't even feel you can do what you need to do for yourself. That you're so fearful of what is going to happen next. And what the narcissist is going to do next. That you don't even want to try. And I'm telling you that your healing is in your culture. Everything that you were separated from, you were separated from so that you would not be empowered in order to ex escape this position. But you can escape it by returning to those exact things. Okay? So I hope this video was helpful to you all. I have some new courses coming up. Uh, just go ahead and check out my website, cometicwellness.com, that are going to help you to heal your life on an individual level, okay? So that you can teach it to your family. And as we build stronger people, stronger families, we build stronger communities in a stronger global black community. So I thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.